Hey, welcome to another episode of Crazy Nights, and I'm one of your Crazy Nights co-hosts, Jamie McNichol, and joining me from the other side of this border is David Fowler. How you going, David? Good, thanks, Jamie. And David, I know you've got a bit of a summer flu. We're going to yeah. give you a bit of Dr. Love treatment <laughs> today, but David, we're going to jump straight into it. No need for an introduction. We are going to be so overwhelmed by having this awesome guest who used to play in KISS for 13 years and been a lead guitarist and also joined other musical ventures after um, the reunion tour yeah, Grand, KISS. Grand Funk Railroad being one of them. Yeah, Grand Funk and Union. And also he's worked with other um, avenues as well, like Lordy. He's worked with Lordy. He's done some other outside projects last year and just recently he's been married to his new lovely wife Lisa and we're talking to Bruce Kulik from all the way from LA. Good morning or I should say good evening Bruce and thank you for joining for Crazy Nights. Here it's, it's uh, early afternoon but it's, it's all good, it's all good. It's, it's the miracles of uh, our uh, internet in the world, right, that I can reach out, we can have a conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and Bruce, we just want to say on behalf of Crazy Nights, congratulations for your new wedding, uh, marriage with Lisa, and we've seen some photos and some videos of um, Lisa singing as well, and I'll just say on behalf of David and I and everyone here at Crazy Nights, congratulations and many happy years together. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I was very, very... Uh happy that the wedding came off very very um it was just a wonderful celebration of love which is what lisa wanted it to be we did it our own way although there were certain traditional things about it but putting together the video which was just taking the short story of the wedding we have over 2,000 photos from our photographers you know and awesome. uh, to to get the best ones that told the story of the night was not easy, but um, we pulled it together. Of course, the song that's in the background, I don't think everybody talks to singing and me playing guitar unless you made it to the credits or you read the little um, introduction that I put up when I posted it, you know, but but it, it really is a, a beautiful song and a beautiful performance and the wedding photos, I, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of the whole thing. And uh, it was just one of those days I'll never forget. And I'm grateful that a couple of my friends recently have been uploading or letting me transfer off their phones some of the uh, video because we didn't hire a videographer, you know, but I have lots of uh, great footage uh, of, of, you know, things that were happening there. So it was uh, quite a night, you know, it really was. And thanks again. And looking at the photo slides um, that you put together for that um, music video for Lisa. Looks like there was a little mini reunion of the Revenge Era with you um, and Eric and Paul and Jane. Yes, I mean, it really meant a lot for me for them to be there, you know. Uh, but, you know, I was invited to, you know, Gene's wedding and Paul shortly after that had a big uh, 60th anniversary party, I mean, for his uh, birthday uh, a couple years back. And, um you know, when I sent out the invitation, it was very, uh, I was very pleased that they were, you know, the timing that, that uh, January 4th represented, they, they weren't traveling. And they, yeah. you know, the reaction was like, I wouldn't miss it for anything. And there they were. And uh, Eric, of course, I stay very tight with. He lives near, very near me here in uh, L.A. And uh, there we were. I mean, you know, that was, that was really, it meant a lot to me. You know, it really did. You know, all the guys in Grand Funk don't live in Los Angeles, you know, and even though I did have some people fly in to the event, you know, I see those guys, you know, every month, you know, so, uh, but to have Kiss there, you know, uh, and, uh, and for us to have the opportunity to celebrate my day with Lisa was really, really wonderful. It was very, very happy. So, David, how are you going now? I'm just hearing a bit of a... Like a scratching, you like you're doing a scratching. No, there, no, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> not scratching. I'm, no. I'm going all right. That's okay, David. But um, David, I'm just going to pass it over to you to um, jump on to um, some questions for Bruce. And you got any to start off with? Uh, believe 
uh, with this vintage guitar, uh, you were just saying before that um, it's a connection to the guitar you used to use on the Revenge Tour, the little uh, Les Paul Jr. that had the that um, little sunburst one that you used to use. Tense relics of vintage-looking Gibson guitars um, in, in interesting colors, sometimes reminiscent sometimes not of a real Gibson. But obviously, he had something that looked like a Les Paul Jr. there. And then uh, yeah. Wes's idea was to tell me, why don't you have him do a copy of your, you know, Kiss Revenge era, which I used on Carnival Souls and on tour for a live three, which was the Revenge tour of your Les Paul. And I thought it was a great idea. So I sent them some very detailed photos. And in October of last year, he showed me the starting uh, body of the prototype. And of course, I was really excited. And I said, finish it. Let's present it at NAMM. Let's do this limited run. So between the three of us, Wes, who owns the website, Billy, who owns the company, and myself, decided we're just going to do a limited run, presuming the prototype will make it to my house before NAM, which it did a week before. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I did a photo shoot with it. Now, keep in mind, the prototype is an exact copy as close as can be to the real one. Uh, the mm-hmm. production model is going to be a legal version of it. So there are going to be some changes to it. So it doesn't affect, yeah. you know, the, uh, yeah. the issues that, that a company like Gibson would have with a guitar maker. You know, just like the same way that ESP makes a really incredible guitar called the Eclipse that I use quite often that looks like yeah. a Les Paul, but it's not a Les Paul, okay? It will be. But uh, I'm really impressed that nearly half of them are sold already, and no one's really held an actual production model. But I got to tell you, the prototype came out amazing, and it shows in the video from the you know short time I spent with Premier Guitar at the NAMM show. It really did sound amazing. It plays great. I had a lot of friends check it out. I mean, look, it, it's it's not like in a difficult thing to have a good piece of mahogany, a comfortable mm-hmm. mahogany neck with the right kind of frets and a great yeah. Seymour Duncan pickup in the guitar, and you're going to mm-hmm. have a good tone machine. You know what I mean? This isn't yeah. like rocket scientists kind of, uh, you know, it's not that hard to make a great, great guitar if, if you put the right ingredients in it, you know, and, and mm-hmm. Billy knows how to do that. And in fact, now he actually has the real guitar so that these yeah. production models will be even closer, okay? And uh, I do want everybody to know, though, because like I just came back from ESP Guitars this morning, and I, you know, I had my my meeting with them about some things going on this year and some of their new models and to, and. Well, back in 2010, Bruce, um, I also was with promoting your BK3 solo album on the Kiss um Kiss Destroyed Adelaide um radio station, but. It was, it was basically you over here similar for the like what you do over over in America called NAMS. Um, with you coming over here in 2010, it's uh, been other avenues of coming back to another AMS. I know David, you've been saying that the AMS festival not going to happen due oh, to it, what it, that um, Australian International Music Festival. I think it. The only one that they've had is the one that Bruce and uh, was and Robin Ford were at. Uh, right. I don't remember it continuing after the 2010 um, right. the Ames Festival. So I don't know what happened there. Sense. But uh, the NAM show in America and the one in Frankfurt that's going on very soon. Uh, yeah, those are the biggest biggest shows, and they're international. Now, yeah. I had a great time. First of all, I got friends there. I love Melbourne. I love Australia. Yeah. I had a great time. I think the people they chose um, to to appear there were um, really, really uh, a great, very, you know, you know, there was a great variety of of, of music talent, you know, yeah. uh, that was invited. I know that one of the days was it was up against one of your biggest, like, uh, you know, football matches, you know, which yeah. killed that day, you know. Yeah, that, um, yeah, my, that's the day we were, that we were there. Yeah, oh. my football team won the grand final that day, right. too, so I had best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, and it was a very rare, though, like, kind of match or something. 
But I could tell you now, those shows are very expensive for a promoter or company yeah. to put on or however they did it. And I could tell then, I was like, I don't know if this is going to happen again. And I felt bad about it because they really did it first class and they took care of me like a king, you know, and I feel really bad. But, you know, I've been aware, even though your economy isn't horrible in any way, because I have a good friend that was even at my wedding, this guy, Paul Drennan, who lives in Australia. Actually, uh, I'll be catching up with him tonight, actually. Good, good, good. Please send him my best, of course. But, uh, you know, I remember I knew all the music stores in your country, and I've done other things there. I did that. Mm. If anybody missed the clinics I did for Alan's music, you really missed something terrific. Exactly. You know? Uh, and then all of a sudden, Alan's doesn't exist anymore, or it merges with Billy Hyde's, and, and you get what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. there's been a lot of... Um, you know, downsizing and downscaling of certain music things over there. I mean, people are always going to go out and listen to music. And I'm, and I'm hoping, of course, to come over there again, maybe even this year. But um, quite honestly, when those things happen, yeah, everybody kind of suffers. And it's a drag, you know, between, uh, you know, the, the fact that I, I really loved all those kind of uh, trips I've made. But I, I, I'm hoping I can do something again there. And even if it isn't something with a music store, or a uh, like a NAM show, it would be uh, even if it's just gigs. You know, I'm going to try to get back to Australia as soon as I can. Mm. Well, Bruce, I want to um, just to go with the drum clinics. The the very first one I went to was back in '96 when you and Eric Singer came right. down for the unholy drum and guitar clinic around Australia. That was the the starting point of all these clinics for me when back in '96. Right. what it was and I met you and met Eric Singer over in Perth when I was living in Perth at yep. the time and I actually bumped into you at, at one of those fancy I think it was like a t-shirt store right next door to the venue in Perth at the Metropolis okay I was and you said if I go into you said you go into the gig tonight and I said yeah man could I take a photo before we get yeah no worries we had a photo together inside the in the store must have been about 18 at the time, I was like a uh -huh. kid at a candy store, right. but I was actually going into this, um, this memor memorabilia shop right next door, and here you, you just walked in, but no, going back to the point, the unholy drum and guitar clinic back in 96, that's what started off for me, um, can you just give a bit of a history lesson of some of the fans that might not even meant to that? Well, that one I remember was put on uh, you got to remember, both Eric and I weren't going to be in Kiss now, so it was like, what do we do? And I remember he had a good relationship with a guy who uh, ran these drum stores, but was connected well with, uh, you know, uh, publications and, 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 and the music store chain. So he kind of realized, well, just bringing over Eric, why don't we do it together? Then they can play together. They'll pick up a bass player, play a little. They'll both do clinics. They'll do master classes. It was very interesting, and uh, I know Eric. We still, I still have on occasion have run into that, that that guy who put it together. But that was interesting, and and certainly a bit groundbreaking for us to do that. And I, I remember I had a great time. It was really cool. I mean, you know, just because I wasn't going to be performing with Kiss didn't mean that the Kiss fans didn't want to, in some way, have an opportunity to to see me. So that was another excuse to get down to Australia. You know. Uh, each each trip has its angle, you know what I mean? You, you get an offer, you get an invitation, you try to figure out how you can make it work. So, um, you, you know, everybody's happy. Uh, and, and every time I do it, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that I pull it off, you know what I mean? But that was the yeah. start of, of me coming over there without the band. And even though I can't do it very often because it is very far away, as you know, it's like a 13-hour flight, 14-hour flight, uh, yeah. and, and you got to do the visas. It, it gets a little complicated. Um, I, I always try not to, uh, you know, it, it ignore the fact that I, I'm kind of due again for another trip. So I gotta, I gotta work on it. Yeah. Well, you did say to me back in 2010, Melbourne, well, Australia was like your second home because you were coming over so frequently back then, but now during Grand Funk and also some side projects, especially last year, you did a couple of side projects. One was I can't remember the name of the album, but it was like a horror type of soundtrack. Right. Some type of, and that, and then you'd done a, 
another guitar part for another um, artist that was just brought out a video clip last late last year, I suppose. I, it, I know it's there, I just don't know the, well, the, the, the yeah, kind of like that rap rap artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're called Marcus and Krieg. I mean, look, I, I get approached for doing sessions, and if mm-hmm. I think someone's got an interesting song or something where I'm going to shine on it, uh, you know, I agree to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yeah, with Grand Funk, it's not that easy to just block a lot of time to go take a trip, and that's why I try yeah. to do um, some of the international travel on our quieter months. You know, uh, I got to admit, it's it's really quite a a juggling act, you know what I mean, to, to make it all happen. But I do the best I can, you know what I mean, to schedule things. And unfortunately, like, like a trip to Australia does take a lot of advanced um, prep, you know what I mean? Unlike mm. I could be added on to a, a, a thing in Vegas, you know, two weeks before. Like now I'm going to be doing the Judas Priest Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp in two weeks. You know what I mean? I just yeah, got invited nice. yesterday to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. uh, but like, you know, there's nobody that's going to pretty much, you know, say like, Hey, could you be in Australia March 1st? You know what I mean? They're not going to say that today. You know what I mean? No. It, it would have to take a lot of preparations and, uh, and I, and I am kind of really careful with the grand funk schedule because we really only do about 35 to 40 shows a year, uh, you know, in the year. And, but they pay me really well. I love the guys. It's fun to play that stuff. And I don't want, um, I want to be able to, be available for all the gigs, you know, I just do, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, I feel I have a certain commitment with them and loyalty to them. So like I said, I juggle it all and I do the best I can. Uh, the sessions never keep me from traveling. Cause you got to remember I could do a session the day before I'm going to go somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, because yeah. nowadays, even though I'll do uh, a session for a Swedish band and then I'll do something from, from the South or I'll do, I'll do, I just did something for a guy in Sweden. And then I did, this uh, this witch house project that's very cool, and there some of them are from Sweden, some of them are from California, you know. But you know, I I use a local studio, and, and now with the internet, once again, I can send my files. Um, I don't have to go travel there to do it. So yeah. you travel really so you can do that in person performance, you know. And uh, it always is exciting uh, to be in front of a crowd. But someone asked me to do a session, I'm happy to do that. But um, I just want to um, go on to this thing, and I'm going to touch blunt, very, very lightly on this. It's a negative thing, Bruce, but we're looking at it in a bigger picture because most kids fan like to keep their blinkers on and just keep everything in a box. With the divide among the Kiss fans, especially now that Kiss has been put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and also the, the makeup of Eric and Tommy wearing Ace and Peter's makeup. Has it ever affected you over this period of time that you've been out of KISS? And if so, and it, or if not, how did you go about it? And what do you want to say amongst all this negativity that's been going on for the, all these years since you've been out of KISS? Hey, David, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. I'm okay, mate. <laughs> I hear some, like, heavy blowing the nose or heavy breathing or something. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It sounds like Darth Vader. Poor guy, poor guy. Anyway, well, look, um, it's a, it, it, it's really fascinating to me, of course, how much um, controversy there always is in the Kiss world amongst the fans. Look, they they really love the band, you know what I mean, and they all like to have an opinion. And, and nowadays, with the internet, you know, the power of the typewriter uh, you, in your computer or even your phone, you can post something and say what you love and what you don't like, you know, and. Um, you know, I, I, I do appreciate everybody having their opinion about it. Uh, so I'll give you some of mine. First of all, I have no I, – I, I don't see any fault really in Eric and Tommy being as the spaceman and the cat man kind of thing because it was getting a little ridiculous to try to create new um, characters for them. I always get asked, what would you be? And I say, the dog. Well, you have a cat yeah. man, I'd be the dog, whatever. Yeah. And that's really just a joke, you know, that I'm saying because I – I did call my first soul record audio dog and I, I was crazy. Yes. I had a, a, a dog that was really precious to me for 15 years named Joe. And yes. a lot of my yes. fans knew about Joe. Um, but, um, you know, they really, there's that era of kiss where they started off in makeup, where it was those four characters, not just the guys, meaning, you know, Paul, Gene, P 
Peter and Ace. And I really think by the time the reunion tour and everything was back to that makeup mania and then the merchandise and the machinery of, of hawking that kind of look and everything and then really taking a completely retro look at the band where they completely ignored my era then and it was all about the glory of the original band. So what do you think when Ace is going to cause a problem and they're going to replace him? They're not going to come up with a new character. They're going to throw that person in the spaceman. And then when Peter thought, well, you know, I, I don't want to do this or if you don't pay me and I don't know how it went down, but I know out of nowhere, Eric gets a phone call. You know, we're going to Japan. You want to play drums? You're going to be in Peter's outfit. You know, mm. he's a musician. He wants a job. He's a great drummer. You know what I mean? He goes like, yeah, I'll yep. be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there he is as, as uh, you, know, you know, the cat. Um, you know, it, it, you know, I know the jokes about it, you know, fake Fraley and copycat and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Whatever. But yeah. I, as a business model, it makes sense. And I actually think Tommy and Eric do a really admirable, admirable job. And, and, and they, they, they do embody the thing. There is only one ace. So, you know, Tommy's not going to walk around on stage and really look like ace. And, 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 you know, Eric's like, like built like a little German tank. So he doesn't look like the Italian Peter Chris, you know, but so what? He's playing his heart out. He sings the parts. He's a great drummer. Tommy plays the right riffs. So I don't have a problem with any of it. And the fans that don't like it, I get their point, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. And they're entitled to their opinion. It also doesn't mean anything to Gene or Paul, because guess what? (laughs) Uh, they still are doing incredibly well with, uh, you know, Eric and Tommy in, in that version of kiss. Okay. Now my era is very unique. I'm very glad to represent it, to wave the flag of it. If you know what I mean? Uh, we of course lost Eric Carr in 91 and Mark St. John passed away for his brief time. And then Vinnie Vincent, you know, nobody wants to talk about because the ones that do, think he's amazing and he's very talented but as a business guy he's done everything wrong okay suing kiss and you you know what i mean you know he just Mm. he's picking the wrong battles in my opinion okay he should be grateful for the time he was in the band and he should have if he would have played it right he would have been in the band longer you know what i mean but that's that's vinnie's issue not mine okay okay so um the way i look at the history of the band and everything i'm just really proud of my era now we have the Hall of Fame thing coming up, which presents a lot of issues and problems, not only for the fans, but for the band. You know, yeah. uh, I just read something about an hour ago that somebody sent me where Paul gave an exclusive interview to Classic Rock with his yeah. opinions of uh, the Hall of Fame. And uh, I know exactly what he's saying there, you know, and I agree with what he's saying and how it all pans out in the end. Who knows? But absolutely the band deserves to be in the hall of fame and no matter what if it's only those four or everybody you know uh the kiss fans know that the band is bigger than the original four there's always going to be a bunch of people that only want to know about the original four and don't want to like kind of understand gene and paul carrying on with other people in makeup there's always going to be that faction and you know they're entitled to their opinion but the point is you know um it's really not they can't force a situation of of guys that don't want to really work together or don't feel like they need to work together if you get what i mean to do it you know and uh does it you know look in 95 when the convention tour kind of started the catalyst of the unplugged which kind of pushed Peter and Ace in the limelight and then made the reunion tour happen. Okay. The timing was right. Guess what? That ain't going to happen again. Okay. The the, the timing is not not right now. It's time for everybody to celebrate the fact that kiss will be in the rock and roll hall of fame. And no matter how it goes down. uh, And I think everybody's aware I've been invited to attend. uh, And I'm very grateful and excited to be there and even if i don't i'm never shown on camera i'm there and i'm there for the band you know a hundred percent you know and 
And it, it always shines on me, no matter what about Kiss. You know, even though I haven't been in the band all these years, them carrying forward and being so successful. And even though uh, I haven't performed with them since 95 or recorded with them since early 96, I'm still a part of the family, you know. So it's to me, it's all good, you know. Yeah. Um, so really, you know, there's always going to be controversy about this band and, and many bands, you know what I mean? Let's face it. Lots of bands have these... Uh, arguments and you know the fans the fans are always going to debate things but but i just love the fact that i was part of a group that still is going forward still has a rich history is still not forgotten in my years in my era even though it may not get the brightest you know spotlight people know it and i and i'm i'm, I'm you know for me to meet young fans that are, weren't even born yet when i was in the band and they're shaking when I, you know, take a picture with them and they're so excited and they know everything I've done with Kiss and they follow me on Facebook and Twitter and my website. I mean, that's an unbelievable reality for me to, you know, to enjoy, you know? Yeah. So, and I, 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 I see it very much like the Beatles are handed down the legacy of the Beatles that there's only two of them alive. And of course they started all this insanity of, of being, you know, you know, playing rock and roll music and letting your hair grow and the way they kind of like, like they were such an important force for everything to come afterwards from the who and Led Zeppelin and the stones and, and then kiss and all the other bands, you know, um, kiss keeps turning on new generations and new generations. And they keep discovering everything about kiss. So it's just, really a testament to what the four original guys created and the way I look at it and what Gene and Paul have been able to protect and move forward. You know what I mean? Even though that's always in their image or that's always to their dictation. So that's why it doesn't really matter, you know, completely what the fans want. Gene and Paul are going to do what they want to do. Exactly. David, I was better put the spotlight over to you. I know you've been breathing like Darth Vader now, so <laughs> resting your vocal cords. So I'll put you over to Bruce. Um, just uh, back on your solo uh, career, uh, you've been you were with Frontiers for the next album. Is there any uh, chance that we'll maybe start recording a new solo album soon, or you got material enough material for another solo album yet, or? Well, I've been actually writing some stuff. Uh, last year, I was writing music. Um, yeah, Frontiers was able to release my album uh, internationally, the BK3, because I actually own that record, and then I licensed it both to Frontiers in uh, uh, outside of North America, and then a company called Rocket Science in North America, who unfortunately right. went out of business. That's the same label that did Anomaly uh, for uh, Ace. You know? Yeah. Uh, and... So I own the rights for BK3 for uh, North America. And, of course, Frontiers can uh, distribute that one uh, the rest of the country, the rest of the world. But um, I am looking at new material. You know, nowadays I could actually probably do one of those pre-selling it fundraiser type uh, Kickstarter type things with my album sure. when, I, when I want. And I'm actually thinking and talking about it now, and I'm not sure of the angle of the record yet, although it may be similar to BK3, in which case I seek out a lot of really cool guests to help create the album with me, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, because I certainly see the music that I could do with my wife as a different thing. I'd like to showcase her as this great singer (laughs) and me play more, you know, jazz guitar kind of the way I hear it. Um, And then, you know... There's always, uh, you know, other projects that I get invited to be involved in that I always look at, but there's nothing really firm happening with. But, yeah, this year I'm thinking about actually finally making that happen, you know. So I'll keep everybody posted for sure. Uh, I do want to get, you know, I know it's different iTunes across the world, but it's real important for me to get my solo records up in at least North America uh, mm-hmm. up on iTunes because um, that isn't there and that will help it uh, appear on Spotify and some of the other streaming um, services because I do want people to hear those albums you know even though I, I paid for them I own them uh, 
but I, I have a whole plan for this year and I got to do it step by step. I mean, it was amazing. I got through a very, very busy 2013, both with traveling and gigging and, and doing sessions and, and prepping for, for things. There was almost a project that, that I was involved in, but I realized it wasn't going to fit my schedule for 2014. So uh, that's going to free up a lot of different things for me this year. And then, of course, wedding, honeymoon, NAM, Grand Funk gig, <laughs> Iceland, which was a great trip. There's a Kiss Army there, too, guys. You know what I mean? It's yeah, amazing. Cool. How, uh, Kiss is everywhere, you know. Uh, and uh, I, I know that this 2014 is the 40th anniversary in a way, for that thing that I did with uh, some guys, the first band I ever had that we wound up calling the, the CD when I put it out, ah, KKB. KKB. You know? yep. Yeah. And what was amazing was Mike, the bass player, who wrote yep. the majority of the material, he actually found finally, it took him four years, but he found the original tapes. Oh, nice. So I now have them transferred for Pro Tools. Now, I don't want to just put it out the way it was again. But my idea is, what if I overdub on that, double guitars, add some things, do a new track, and then yeah. we could do a limited, you know, new version commemorating that, you know, time capsule of my of my career. You know, in fact, Mike was here uh, right he in December. He lives uh, in New York, where I used to live, and he was out here in L.A. He came by. And uh, that was great. You know, it was great to see him and, and show him my home. I've never gotten that chance since uh, since I've lived out in L.A. since 86, you know. So, mm -hmm. so you know, stuff like that that I want to, um, you know, accomplish this year. I also want to add some bonus material to the uh, iTunes release, you know, which I'll okay. be able to share with everybody. So there's lots of things like on the horizon, um, you know, David, but I'm not real – clear in what order everything's going to happen you know what i mean yeah fair enough yeah you got the yeah you got it's been looking at your tour that uh pays there you got the 12 dates with grand funk so far this year well you know what happens with grand funk is kind of funny is that the dates just kind of come in by the ones all year yeah. you know what i mean because you'll look back in may and you'll probably see a much busier summer and um mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if you looked at the website in May, you know, so they, they yeah. just come in one at a time, you know, uh, and it will probably add up like it always has consistently for all the years I've been with them thir between 35 and 40 gigs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's we, we don't do it like the way like somebody else announces, OK, sticks, we're going out on a tour. It's going to be sticks and REO. And here are the 40 dates. You know what I mean? Come see us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's it, we, we just do it a little differently. But, you know, what? It works for us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I can't complain with uh, uh, the fact that, you know, it's a great band to be involved in, and I love the music that we play, and, and uh, I can't believe this will be my, uh, you know, 14th year or something. You know, it's crazy. Oh. It's crazy, <laughs> yeah. Now, Bricks, is it true that you and your brother Bob going to be collaborating on some stuff? I'm hearing a rumor right. going around. There were lots of issues with my schedule last year. Uh, certainly, issues for him last, you know, you know, last year too. Hang on one second. I know that's my mother calling. You'll love this. Okay. Hello. Yes, ma. Hi. Can I call you back though, like in a half hour? I'm just finishing up an interview, actually. Okay. All right. All right. Say hi to Australia, ma. Hey, guy. All right. She says hi. Okay, all right, man. I'll say that. All right, but God bless us. She's 89. Oh, no. God bless you. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I'm very practical. I don't like to announce things or make a plan unless I really know how I can implement it. You know what I mean? Because you got to go from A to B to D to, you know, until you can get to, rather, I skip C there. I'm sorry. To C to D before you can get to Z, you know, which is the final product. And And there's a lot of steps, and I don't like to, you know, really, uh, you know, talking about the early steps until I see the end game, you know, but yeah, the, the stuff that we fooled around with material wise was very interesting. And I'm real excited that Bob's been, even though he still records bands and has a studio, I know he's been stepping out a little more and appearing at events and, and playing with people. And I have been encouraging him to do that because he's a, he's an excellent guitarist, of course. 
and he, he's been more behind the scenes, you know, producing and, and in the studio, and I've been trying to get him to get out there, you know what I mean, some more. So, so who knows, you know, even, even this year could uh, – where, where we, we do have something to offer to the fans, you know, but it's got to be right. I don't like to just, like, throw things together. I always like it to be great. Exactly. I just want to ask a, a quick question here. It just came to me. Um, with the way – the music world is at the moment, and you've got the the icons, I should say, bands like Motley Crue, that just announced a farewell to us just early this month, and Kiss, who's on their 40th anniversary, and the Rolling Stones will be here in Australia very shortly for their 50th anniversary. I'm, Rick, the path I'm going down here, Bruce, is when these bands decide to go away from the spotlight, and just hang up the boots or the microphone, do you see any other bands following on behind them to be that next icon, so to speak, or the next band to focus on? Do you see anything coming through that going to take the world by storm? You know, it's a great question. I'm not sure I have the answer. I really don't know. Um, all I know is I'm, I'm very, very happy to have been part of a band like KISS and it blows me away to watch McCartney still going strong in his 70s. You know, um, you know, you see the Stones doing what they're doing, um, you, you know, uh, and, 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 and to see that, look, there's been many, many big bands through the 80s and the 90s and through the 2000s that make a big noise and then they poof, go away. It's just interesting to me that the bands that I kind of really admired and grew up with are still really the titans of the industry from the who to ACDC to the stones. You know, I, I saw bad yeah. company last year. Okay. Uh, you know, come on. I mean, you know, what a great band, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, they didn't have, you know, you know, they had a different bass player and, um, mm -hmm. uh, my, my friend Howard Lee was additional guitar to Mick Rouse. But Paul Rogers, he's a monster as a singer. Paul Still Stanley's, got a good. Paul Stanley's Still favorite got a good. vocalist, okay? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, classic rock is what I'm trying to say. Don't you think even if it wasn't with, you know, Paul Kossoff is dead, if Free yeah. did, it, 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 it would be a huge reaction. I know Joe Bonamassa, who I know through these uh, guitar dinners that I have here in L.A., with a bunch of, you know, musicians and industry people get together every couple of months. And Joe, Joe would love to be the Joe, you know, be, be the Paul Kossoff for that. You know what I mean? That would be yeah, huge too, you know? Yeah. So you get what I'm saying? I mean, it's, but mm. it just seems that like classic rock just seems to still be strong. And is there going to be a huge, you know, anniversary of, of Nirvana? You know, they can't be. You know, no. uh, even though they were very important, Guns N' Roses, they're going to fight forever. But they would certainly that would be huge if Axel and Slash did something together. But, you know, mm -hmm. when you think about it past that, even who who was there that you can think about a, you know, a 30th anniversary or 40th anniversary. Pro Jam's still doing it. You know, they're still mm -hmm. out there. You know, they're, uh, they're the Foo Fighters. Oh. You know, yeah, Foo Fighters, he's still going strong. And I mean, mm. you know, but bands like Oasis that were huge at one point, you think there's going to be yeah. a huge... No. Aerosmith, nah. they're still going strong. So they can have, yeah. you know, anniversary yeah. after anniversary. Cheap Trick can keep going and, you know, do their early albums, you know. Again, it's all going back to this magical classic rock, you know. Yeah. And, Bruce... How do you um, look at the music world at the moment due to when bands, including yourself with the solo album, BK3, to push it out marketly, globally? Um, I know here in Australia, um, with some of the bands, we're trying to find it hard to get a push over in America, and some of the bands over in America will find the same back trying to push it out. Um, do you think the internet has killed the music industry for the legal download, or it's just the business has not maintained the strongness as it was back in the 80s? Well, people love music. The internet has obviously taken its toll on... Some people just think music's for free. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you don't have to buy 
BK3, you can probably pull up the songs on YouTube and the song will play and there'll be some photo collage of me or something, you know. Um, you know, I think that's kind of lame because you don't own it. You can't take it with you. But um, yeah. but people do. Now, I, I'm grateful that KISS fans do like to hold the product. They, they really do like to own it. They want to look at a yeah. package and things like that. But that part of the Internet has really hurt uh, the record industry. Um, uh, now, now streaming radio, which unfortunately doesn't pay the musicians and the songwriters uh, the right amount of money, but that's a fun way to listen to. Let's say I like Jimi Hendrix, so I put in Jimi Hendrix and Pandora or Spotify or whatever, and I can listen to a station that's going to play Hendrix and other Hendrix-like kind of music. That's fun. That's a good thing about the internet. But unfortunately, all those artists aren't getting paid very well, you know. Um, the other thing, though, that is good, even though we know as a business-wise it's really bad when people are just listening to music for free and never buy it, is, but the fans, the internet brings the fans closer. So a band yeah. with a good website can now hype what they're up to. I'm, I'm able to communicate with, you know, between my Twitter and my Facebook now, I'm like at a, over, a, you know, like probably 130,000 people now. You know, mm-hmm. I can potentially reach with, with a click of a, of, a, of a button on my phone or my, my computer. And that's pretty remarkable. You know, Kiss Online has over 11 million people on their Facebook. Stuff like that is, you know, incredible. You know what I mean? The fact that you can reach that many people that way, you know, and then and, and they can be aware of what's going on. So I like that part of it. And um, people are always going to want to see live music, which is why I have flown a million miles on Delta Airlines, a million miles on American Airlines. You get what I'm saying? I travel yeah. a lot. Right? Yeah. But the truth is, I would wish, and I am very supportive when there's something I like, I hear. Yeah, I don't have to have the physical product, but I'm going to go to iTunes and download it and pay for it, which means the artist got paid. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I'm not going to, you know, like, 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 uh, just listen to the YouTube videos of it. You know, I mean, I, I, I do support music and owning it. And, uh, I think, I think others should follow because it costs a lot of money. To record and it, 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 you know, there's a creative uh, thing that somebody should be compensated for. You know what I mean? So uh, that again, that part is the only downfall I find of the internet. Yeah. Hey. Well, David, as you know, this is the 40th anniversary, and I think the 40th anniversary starts off tonight over in your neck of the woods today, yeah. David. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the pony, pony bar, uh, uh, no, sorry, yeah, cherry bar. Sorry. Um, yeah, there's a and they're going to do. Uh, there's a band playing, including Paul Drennan, that is in Bruce's uh, solo band, and I believe you, your drummer Rusty. Uh, they're yep. going to do the um, the whole first album in its entirety, uh, from start to finish, plus uh, be other bands as well, and uh, and they'll be playing Kiss music all night. So be good if it. For everybody to get down there to the Cherry Bar in Melbourne, so and uh, go and say hi to Paul as well. Um, yeah, I think those be, guys are really good. Paul yeah. is a big freak, and um, all the guys that he works with, they're, they're dear friends of mine. And uh, yeah, if you uh, if you like Kiss, you should go. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, but no, this is. This thing tonight, David. Sorry, I can't be there. That's you know, right. <laughs> got family commitments to do. But um, without a heartbeat, it was a never another day. I'll be there, and um, why not? But you, David. Before we, I ask Brooke one more question, you gave me a great thing. Um, of positive. Um, Megadeth was pulled off the. Well, they cancelled their sound wave, but Ice Earth has done other recording for Kiss like crazy. Not um, Creatures of the Night. God of Thunder in Detroit Rock City. I have purchased uh, my mate and great, so I'll be coming I don't think, to your neck I, of the woods. I don't think I said they done Detroit. They, <laughs> they did Creatures and um, God of Thunder. There was a recording, a live recording they did Detroit. Oh, okay. Apparently. Well, fair enough. So, it was a live recording. But no, these bands are coming to Australia, and I'll be marching on mm-hmm. to Melbourne, the capital city 
rock city of Australia, Melbourne. So, yeah. But unfortunately, Megadeth can't be here. We all know what the reason behind that was. But. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> but, um, Bruce, just one question I've got to ask, and I'll pass it on to David, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, with the, um, the new vinyls that are coming out, the 10 vinyl through Universal, are you surprised um, it's taken this long for Psycho Circus to be released on vinyl for the very first time? Oh, all right, so, so fill me in on what's happening. I didn't know. So they're putting out uh, uh, all, you know, all but, records up until when? When? What, up until uh, right, it's, right. it's just select, select albums. Um, there's 10 albums. I think Universal are putting them out. There's, I know out of your era, this Revenge is there. Of, uh, yeah. Revenge, that. Psycho Circus, Animal, Asylum, Animal Lives, Lick It Up. Uh, and then there's about two or three of the, I think, uh, like the first, couple, first, the first two Kiss albums. Right. Uh, yeah, they're, they're being released on vinyl again. The one, the the new what was it, the 180 gram vinyl that's it's uh, been coming out the last couple of years. So, well, here's the question, David. Here's a question. Oh, we got Bruce here. Yeah. Should it's Alive Three been released on a double vinyl? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, anything with me, um, I'm real excited to see released. And I, and I know that when Kiss decided to do um, the Monster record, and instead of going with Walmart, which is what they did in America for yeah. uh, uh, the uh, Sonic Boom, uh, I know part of their deal was reconnecting again with, with the, the, the label, with Universal, Polygram, whatever you want to call it, you know. And I know part of that was exciting on both parts because you see Universal Polygram owned, you know, a, a chunk of the KISS catalog. So even though KISS wasn't signed to anybody, um, if they wanted to do things coordinated, it's best to get in bed with the people who have your 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 product line. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. what it would do is kind of force um, them to be able to both be on the same page with – the worst thing is when a label puts out stuff and you have nothing to do with the label. You know, here, all right, yeah. they, they fund you for a new record. Let's put out vinyl of all these records. And it's just more money for more, you know, interesting new ways to enjoy, for the fans to enjoy the product. You know what I mean? So everybody wins, you know. So I don't really have an opinion about it, but I know in a business sense, it's very wise for them to be together. And, of course, I welcome because I think that they've always ignored product wise quite a bit of my era uh i mean i'd love even carnival of souls to be like remixed and remastered and and put on vinyl you know what i mean who knows mm. i mean that 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 album's a real bastard of the uh catalog but um y you know uh maybe in time it will but revenge of course and any of the stuff they're putting out on vinyl now that's wonderful i think it's great and also i've got one this one just come it's going to be very very good question it Bruce, a lot of bands like Nightwish and Ice Earth and so forth, so forth, when an album comes up, there'll be a deluxe fan pack where you can buy not only the, the CD, but you get a, a gift pack like a, a T-shirt, right. so forth, so forth. Why hasn't Kiss done that over 40 years? You know, it's, a, it's not a good question for me. This guy, Tobias Samet, who has uh, that band Avantasia, right? And he was on BK3. Yeah. And uh, his other band's called Ed Guy. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know if he does a fan pack, but he'll do, like, this, you know, he'll do the vinyl. He'll do the, uh, you know, the regular CD. Then it's the bonus CD. Then it's, like, the book CD, you know. <laughs> Look, you know, Kiss got interesting with the box set, with the guitar case versions, you know, and things like that. Um, why don't they? They should. I agree. I think the fans would love it, you know. I, I But I, I can't give you a, a reason why they haven't really... Uh, Done that yeah. a lot, you know. So, like, all right, guys, I only have one more question, so make it a good one. Cool. Yeah, come on, David. You. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we we do you think we we uh, when do you think you might we might see you again in Australia again? You see you were saying. Well, I know that when Paul was here, Paul Drennan, who we mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah. You know, he was. We 
we didn't have a lot of time at the wedding, obviously, to talk about what to do. But I know he met my um, producer friend, Jeremy, who was there, who produced BK3. Yeah. And they were chatting yeah. a lot because they were Facebook friends and, you know, all that. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, we were all trying to – I remember they were having a big conversation as to, like, what would be a cool way to bring me over this time. So the dialogue has started. I can't tell you there's anything firm, but at least there's been some dialogue. So I'm hoping – you got to remember the last few times I came, it was easier to do because real stores with a real, um, you know, there was something there to sponsor me with, you know what I mean? To yeah. come over visa and all approached me, you know what I mean? So it made it really easy for Paul and I to put it together. All right, we'll do some gigs. I'll do the, the store appearances and everybody's happy. And that's exactly how it went down. It all worked out great. But uh, right now, with the, you know, we, I know earlier in our conversation, we talked about how the stores are really struggling or they're all downsized so much. I can't rely on the stores. So that's why Paul and I have to come up with a good angle and figure it out so that we can make it work for the visa and figure out who would be in the band, how we do this. And believe me, you guys will be one of the first to know, OK, if we can get it together. Sweet. No worries. And we would love to see you come back down here. I mean, there are some rumors that came out of the Kiss Cruise, and one of our friends from Melbourne named JT Corbett said that you and Bob were coming down to Australia, but nothing's been confirmed. It's only a rumor, and I'm only going to keep it as a rumor. If yeah, it happens... It's a rumor, because I, I, that's one I hadn't heard before, okay? <laughs> yeah. But um, he did say that to me, so I did, that's why I never asked you. But it's right. a rumor, and we're going to pinch it with a grain of salt, and like you said, if we do know, it'll come to yeah. from you to us. Sure. But Bruce, the door's always open to come... To, back on our show and also back down in Australia. And is there any last things you'd like to ask to the fans down under? Well, I just want to let everybody know part of why I even ran the uh, wedding video that I was so excited about technically on a Thursday in America, meaning the 13th of February, not the 14th, is because I knew it was the 14th already in Australia. And I don't forget about my fans over there, and I didn't want them to have it a day late. And I wanted them to have valentine's day so i actually introduced it a day early just for my friends down under okay so i really really it's a great country you guys are such great kiss supporters and have always supported my you know uh my post kiss years so i just i'm very grateful for uh you know my visits there and i'm hoping of course to do it again okay so thanks again well, and just before nope, you go nope website Bruce, just, nope, facebook just, you know, so yeah, just before you go, Bruce, Dave, and I will have a flat white coffee. There, there you go. Breakfast. I love the flat whites. Absolutely. Love it. <laughs> All right, Bruce. Thanks All for right. joining us. I, okay. I know you got I know you got to run, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, mate. All right. See All you, Bruce. Bye-bye Bye-bye Cheers. Bye. I'm talking to Bruce Kulik from all the way from L.A. Good Don't morning, or I should say good evening, Bruce, and thank yeah, you for no joining for Crazy Nights. Here it's, it's uh, early afternoon, but it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's the miracles of uh, our uh, internet in the world, right, that I can reach out, we can have a conversation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Bruce, we just want to say on behalf of Crazy Nights, congratulations for your new wedding uh, marriage with Lisa. And we've seen some photos and some videos of um, Lisa singing as well. And I'll just say on behalf of David and I, and everyone here at Crazy Nights, congratulations and many happy years together. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I was very, very uh, happy that the wedding came off very, very... Um, it was just a wonderful celebration of love, which is what Lisa wanted it to be. We did it our own way, although there were certain traditional things about it. But putting together the video, which was just taking the short story of the wedding... We have over 2,000 photos from our photographers. Rick and Paul and Jane. Yes. I mean, it really meant a lot for me for them to be there, you know. Uh, but, you know, I was invited to, you know, Gene's wedding. And Paul, shortly after that, had a big uh, 60th anniversary party, I mean, for his uh, birthday uh, a couple of years back. And, um, you know, when I sent out the invitation, it was very uh, – I was very pleased that they were, you know, the timing that that, uh, January 4th represented. They they weren't traveling. The reaction was like I wouldn't miss it for anything. And there they were. And uh, 
Eric, of course, I stay very tight with. He lives near, very near I me mean, here in uh, L.A. And uh, there we were. I mean, you know, that was that was really it meant a lot to me. You know, it really did. You know, all the guys in Grand Funk don't live in Los Angeles. You know, and even though I did have some people fly in to the event, you know, I see those guys, you know, every month. You know, so uh, but to have Kiss there, you know, uh, and uh, and for us to have the opportunity to celebrate my day with Lisa was really really wonderful. You know, very, very happy. You know and uh, to to get the best ones that told the story of the night was not easy, but um, we pulled it together. Of course, the song that's in the background, I don't think everybody told Lisa singing and me playing guitar unless you made it to the credits or you read the little um, introduction that I put up when I posted it, you know, but but it, it really is uh, a beautiful song and a beautiful performance and the wedding photos, I, I'm I couldn't be more proud of the whole thing. And uh, it was just one of those days I'll never forget. And I'm grateful that a couple of my friends recently have been uploading or letting me transfer off their phones some of the uh, video because we didn't hire a videographer, you know, but I have lots of uh, great footage uh, of, of, you know, things that were happening there. So it was uh, quite a night, you know, it really was. And thanks again. And looking at the photo slides... Um, that you put together f for that um, music video for Lisa. Looks like there was a little mini reunion of the Revenge Era with you um, and Eric. Hey, welcome to another episode of Crazy Nights, and I'm one of your Crazy Nights co-hosts, Jamie McNichol, and joining me from the other side of this border is David Fowler. How you going, David? Good, thanks, Jamie. And David, I know you've got a bit of a summer flu. We're going to yeah. give you a bit of Dr. Love treatment today. But David, we're going to jump straight into it. No need for an introduction. We are going to be so overwhelmed by having this awesome guest who used to play in KISS for 13 years and been a lead guitarist and also joined other musical ventures after um, the reunion tour yeah, Grand, to Kiss. Grand Funk Railroad being one of them yeah Grand Funk and Union and also he's worked with other um, avenues as well like Lordy he's worked with Lordy he's done some other outside projects last year and just recently he's been married to his new lovely wife Lisa and when so David how are you going now I'm just hearing a bit of a like a scratching, you're like you're doing a scratching. No, head, no, but... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not scratching. <laughs> no. I'm going all right. That's okay, David. But um, David, I'm just going to pass it over to you to um, jump on to um, some questions for Bruce. And you got any to start off with? I uh, believe uh, with this vintage guitar, uh, you were just saying before that um, it's a connection to the guitar you used to use on the Revenge Tour. The will. Uh, Les Paul Jr. that had the that um, little sunburst one that you used to use. Tense relics of vintage looking Gibson guitars um, in, in interesting colors, sometimes reminiscent sometimes of a real Gibson. But obviously, he had something that looked like a Les Paul Jr. there. And then uh, yeah. Wes's idea was to tell me, why don't you have him do a copy of your you know, Kiss Revenge era, which I used on Carnival Souls and on tour for Alive 3, which was the 